And uh, Ms. Naomi King is here uh, in this matter uh, with separate proceedings regarding support. Um, Mr. Walburn's here for the prosecutor's office. Mr. Walburn, do you have an update? Uh, defendant was served uh, March 6, 2023. This is a foster care placement case. Uh, we imputed Ms. King at minimum wage. I think she had worked at some point, potentially at Burger King for a while. We used minimum wage. Uh, if you put it in, there's, she has zero other children, so there'd be zero overnights. Uh, if you put in the support formula, it comes up to 351 support, $76 ordinary medical. So the formula has a recommendation of 427. Uh, I've been made aware that she did sign off on the children, so I don't believe she has parental rights anymore. Uh, whatever the court wants to do in this situation, but we did bring it before the court. Uh, Ma'am, do you agree with the recommend recommendation for support? I did work at Burger King, but I was only working like two days a week and I wasn't making only maybe a hundred dollars a week. Oh, you don't work there anymore? No. Oh, where do you work now? I'm in the process of finding a different job because according to the child support paper, it said 427 a month and I can't afford that working at Burger King. Oh, okay. Um, I'm on food stamps and health insurance too, because I can't afford food. So you have no job right now? No, I'm looking for another job. Oh, well, so you didn't work at Burger King very long then? No, because I couldn't afford to pay rent. I, I was paying rent to my brother. I was paying 200 a month. So, so you were making some money and you couldn't afford to pay rent. So you quit that job. Now you're not making any money. Are you? I'm you not making any money right now. Like, I'm in the process of finding a different job. Oh, are you better able to afford rent without any income? No, I'm probably be getting kicked out of my brother's house. Uh, when's the last job you had before that job at Burger King? Like before like the beginning of March. Oh, where'd you work then? I didn't work anywhere after Burger King. I haven't worked anywhere before oh, Burger King. I, I didn't what, work anywhere. I, I asked what job you had before the Burger King job. None. Never. I was trying to get unemployment, but they kept denying me my unemployment. Where did you work? Before, uh, before unemployment, that, you... I worked for the carnival. Oh, okay. How many years did you do that? I worked six and a half months out of the summer. Every year? Just 2017, 2021, and 2022. Are you going to do that again this summer? I, I don't know what I'm doing. Like I said, I'm in the process of finding another job. All right. This time I'll make a finding. Ms. Uh, King doesn't have the current ability to pay support. She may in the future. So I'll uh, recommend that a zero support order be entered at this time um, and that the matter be reviewed by a friend of the court in 90 days. All right. So I'm not going to order you to pay support at this time. All right. All right. I'm with you. A friend of the court will send out some paperwork in about three months, though, and uh, we'll see where you're at at that point. All right. Okay. All right. You're all set. Hello, Have a good day. Here. Hello. All right. Uh, just a second here. Okay. Are you are you Savannah? Yes. Okay. Five Savannah Fulvinga. And Tyler Alexander, Ms. Hobing is here. Mr. Alexander is not. The uh, matter was set for proceedings regarding paternity and support. And Mr. Walburn's here for the prosecutor's office. Mr. Walburn, do you have an update? Uh, defendant was served uh, March 13 of 2023. Uh, it's a paternity case. We have to deal with the paternity aspect first. Um, the last information we had is that we imputed both parties at minimum wage. Neither party had any other children. 
if you put that in the child support formula, it comes up to three twenty eight support, nineteen dollars ordinary medical for a total of three forty seven. Um, the information I have, at least for my caseworker, is maybe that there was an issue that potentially Mr. Alexander was not the father. Um, but I don't know where that stands today. We do have to deal with the paternity aspect. All right, and he's not here to no. offer any uh, suggestions on that. Um, so, uh, ma'am, you understand paternity has to be figured out before support can be, right? Yes. And uh, without Mr. Alexander being here, I, I guess I'll adjourn this. Uh, how long does it take to get paternity done and results back? Um, four or six weeks. I don't know. We can set it out when we guess, right. make some substantial. Some of it will depend on the parties as well. All right. I'll adjourn it without date, and then it'll be reset for a hearing if necessary. But um, I'll give the I'll direct the prosecutor's office to at least offer a DNA test to Mr. Alexander if he wants one. All right. Oh. Okay, thank you. All right. Uh, so uh, I guess we're all set for today. You'll get uh, notice of uh, when you need to uh, appear. Um, when uh, I don't know. Do you need her for the DNA test or just in? Eventually we will. Like, okay. But, uh, all right. So then we talk about right? the DNA test. Matt, is it, uh, do you guys have to draw blood from my son for it or saliva? Just a swab. No, it's a swab. Oh. Okay, I just want to make sure. Back. Yep. Uh, this is the time set for a review hearing in this matter, review of the guardianship. Uh, I would note that I did not receive an annual report from Cody Juros, the appointed guardian, and he has not appeared today, although uh, he was sent notice by the court back on 4-3. Um, Mr. Salasina has appeared on behalf of the department. Um, but again, the uh, appointed guardian has not filed a report and has not appeared. Uh, Mr. Salasin, anything you want to address today? Yes, Your Honor. Uh, likewise, MDHHS did not receive an annual uh, report from the juvenile guardian. Uh, accordingly, uh, at this point, uh, we'd like the court to order an investigation to make sure that uh, the guardianship remains appropriate. All right. Uh, at this time, then. Um, the uh, review hearing was filed. Uh, nobody has appeared uh, to report on the status of the minor. I would agree that the uh, Department of Health and Human Services uh, should be appointed to investigate the juvenile guardianship, write a written report with the court. The report, uh, uh, the report to continue, uh, conclude, geez, can't speak. The report shall include a recommendation regarding whether the juvenile guardianship should continue, be modified, um, or otherwise, and uh, let's see. the investigation shall be completed and report filed uh, within 28 days. That should be sufficient, correct? Yes, Your Honor. All right, and uh, we'll hold a hearing then um, at that point. There yeah, being nothing Baker. further, then we should do. He's here with the spokes, and uh, Mr. Janice is on Zoom representing him. Uh, Mr. Walbert's here from the prosecutor's office. This is the date and time set for uh, pre-trial and. Uh, Council, has this matter been resolved? I believe it has. I talked to Mr. Janice. I indicated that the victim of submitted restitution information was actually in excess of five hundred or in excess of two hundred dollars. Um, I did indicate, however, he could plead to the charge. I wouldn't file any new charges if they wanted to avail themselves of this charge. Mr. Janice, that is correct. My client is going to enter a plea to the malicious instruction under two hundred. He understands that his restitution may be more than that. And we've discussed what his rights are and what rights he's given up by entering a plea. All right. Uh, Joshua, raise your right hand then. You're the right. Your right hand. Uh, do you swear or affirm any testimony you've given this cause to be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the true self you got? Yes. All right. And you've been charged with malicious destruction of, of personal property less than $200. That's a misdemeanor, punishable by 93 days in jail and or a $500 fine or three times the amount of damage. You understand that? Mm -hmm. the yes or no? Yes. All right. Here, why don't you uh, spit your gum out. Um, so, uh, 
you understand the penalty for that. That's the penalty that uh, an adult would be facing. Uh, juveniles uh, would treat a little bit differently, but you still have a number of rights. If you enter a plea today, you'd be giving up those rights. You have the right to be presumed innocent until proven guilty. You have the right to have your guilt proven beyond a reasonable doubt. You understand if you enter a plea today, you're giving up those rights. Yes. All right. And you understand that you uh, have the right to have a trial. Uh, that trial could be in front of myself, the referee. It could be in front of a judge or in front of a jury. You understand that you're giving up the right to a trial? Yes. All right. And at a trial, you could uh, present evidence on your own behalf, question any evidence presented against you. You can testify if you wish or remain silent, not have your silence used against you. Um, you understand you're giving up those rights? Yes. All right. And uh, I need you to understand that if your plea is accepted, you'd be under the jurisdiction of the court. And I have pretty wide latitude dealing with kids under the jurisdiction of the court. You could be placed on probation, ordered to pay fines and costs, do community service, write a letter of apology, uh, do programs that are determined to be in your best interest if, that, if, that, uh, if that's rec recommended by your probation officer. Uh, you could be placed outside the home in a detention center if there are problems. You understand that? Okay. You do yes. understand or you don't? Yes. All right. And uh, has anybody promised you anything or threatened you or told you you had any other rights other than what I've gone over with you here on the record? Are you sure or something? I think you understand all your rights. Yeah. Right. You understand you're giving up those rights if you enter a plea, correct? Yes. All right. Uh, why don't you tell me what happened then that led to the charge? Where were you on March, March 21st? Okay. Did you encounter an automobile in a parking lot or somewhere? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Um, did you uh, do some damage to that automobile? Yes. What'd you do? Scratch. All right, scratch the paint in some way? Yeah. All right, and do you agree that uh, you caused some damage? Your da the damage you caused had some value? Yes. All right, and uh, I guess Mr. Walburn does satisfy the elements of the offense. It does. Mr. Janice? Yes. All right, and folks, do you agree with uh, uh, Joshua admitting his responsibility for the offense? Yes. 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 All right, with parental consent, then, uh, counsel, if I comply with the court rule? You yeah. have. Mr. Janice, if I comply with the court rule as it relates to your yes. client's plea? All right. I would agree. I'll accept the plea. The matter will be set for a dispositional hearing. That'll be the next time you'd have to come to court. That'll be in a few weeks. In the meantime, the juvenile probation department will be in touch and they'll. Uh, get some information, they'll do a report with recommendations and we'll consider that at the next year. All right? Okay. Okay. Everything going all right with Joshua at this point? Um, not really. Not really? What's going on? Um, he doesn't want to listen. Uh, he doesn't want to go to school. He's been skipping class. Uh, they say that he has um, like an attitude problem. Like he doesn't know how to, to follow directions. He feels like he can do whatever he wants. At this point, I've had to call the police to find him a couple of different times to bring him home because he's just left. It's getting harder for me to control the situation at hand. Okay. Uh, you got anything you want to say about that, Joshua? No. No? Okay. Well, I can tell you this much. Um, once you're uh, once you're under the jurisdiction of the court, and technically you are at this point, like I said, I have pretty wide latitude dealing with kids, up to and including placement outside the home. You understand that? Okay. Okay. So now, not only do you have to comply with the rules at home and at school and when you're out and about in the community, which has been a problem, it sounds like, you also have to comply with the rules of probation or the rules of pre-trial release, I guess we'll call it, and that is that you follow your mom's rules. If you don't, they're going to haul you back in here. We're gonna have a hearing and you may go live somewhere else for a while. Is that what you wanna have happen? No. No? All right, well, you're the only one that control that, that can control that, okay? All right, so uh, if I hear nothing between now and the next hearing, I'll assume everything has improved or at least enough to where you didn't bring it to juvenile probation department's attention. Okay. If not, 
Um, when they get a hold of you, tell them what's going on. Then well, they'll bring it back in. We'll figure something out. Okay, thank you. All right. Okay, we're all set. Thank you. Yeah.